the panics of 1857 and 1893 were said to be caused by one large investment firm collapsing. And that was it. One large investment firm collapsed, and then the whole thing collapsed. In 1893, that was the J. Cook Company, and then 1857, that was the Ohio Life Insurance and Trust Company. I, it doesn't make sense for one company to take the whole entire anchor, take the whole... Another interesting reason for the 1857 panic, in September 1857, you had the SS Central America, a.k.a. the Ship of Gold, a.k.a. the SS George Law, after the George Law of New York, sunk in a hurricane. 425 of the 578 passengers are going to die, and 30,000 pounds, or 15 tons, or 14,000 kilograms of gold is going to sink into the ocean. That would be $550 million today. So William Lewis Herndon went down with his ship. So two reasons for the 1857 panic. First, there is a ship that lost 15 tons of gold by sinking into, you know, some waterway somewhere, ocean probably, right, Pacific, Atlantic, I don't know. But you had a big old fucking, you know, 15 tons of gold that just, you know, is taken out of the money supply. And then you also had that Ohio Life Insurance and Trust Company that collapsed, too. So, you know, we have to be very vigilant whenever it comes to any of these so-called too-big-to-fail companies. No company is too big to fail, but we have to pay attention very closely when one of these companies, you know, do close so the ripple effects aren't felt. If they mismanaged and they were shitty companies, they should fail. Of course they should, just like any you know, small business person. You're selling a bunch of crap that nobody wants. We're not going to rescue you. No, you're not going to keep getting our money. No, 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 no. Okay, so Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan is, you know, a political god because he had survived an assassination attempt within just two months after he was inaugurated as president. During a 1980 debate, he said he was aiming for a balanced budget by 1984. Andrew Jackson is the only president in American history to ever pay off America's debt, totally, ever, on January 8, 1835. So in 1835, so America paid off her bills one time in 1835. So will America pay off her bills again? I don't know. Did Reagan ever get that balanced budget? I don't to find out, you got to read the book. Da -da -da. Today, the net interest on our debt that we pay is $600 billion. 2019, we pay $600 billion on that $25 trillion in debt. We paid $600 billion. We have $4 more trillion, both Ronald Reagan and Donald Trump. They're increasing the deficit, increasing the debt. These are the worst conservatives ever in the history of conservatism. So a recession, definition of a recession is two consecutive quarter decline in GDP. So GDP declines two consecutive quarters for six months. That's a recession. So there was a recession in 1980 under Jimmy Carter's administration in the beginning of 1980, the first six months. Then there was one year's worth of growth. And then Ronald Reagan's recession, you know, hits July 1981, and it goes on till November 1982. So Ronald Reagan's recession is going to last for one year and four months. Jimmy Carter's was six months. It's solidly a recession because it's less than two years, right? But it's almost two years, so it's not a depression. And it spans both Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan, which is important because I was kind of given – Jimmy Carter a pass, but Jimmy Carter is the one that picked the Volcker. He's the one that picked Volcker, the Fed chairman that raised the federal funds rate to 21.5%, which was an induced, an intentional panic. They intentionally caused a recession to fight inflation. The inflation is a tax, but you can fight inflation without increasing the jobless rate. So in 1982, the unemployment rate is going to hit 11%, which is going to be the worst uh, since, I don't know, the Great Depression, since World War II, 11%. They're freaking out about 11%, but typically it used to be 100%. America used to have 100% full employment. That's good for workers' wages, and that's also good for workers' benefits. 
we don't do 100 percent, you know, uh, full employment. We don't do full employment no more. If everybody has jobs, and that means that's good for the workers because they can, you know, use that as leverage to get themselves better jobs. But 1982, 11% unemployment rate, so people are freaking out. There's a panic, right? So not only do you have rapid inflation growth, you get high federal funds rate. Now you're getting a bunch of unemployed. The CPI is what they use to measure inflation. That's the Consumer Price Index. In 1980, inflation was 15%. In 1983, the inflation CPI is going to fall below 4%. So... The Volcker Recession, while it caused all this, you know, pain and turmoil, it worked when it came to the inflation. Inflation was knocked down. In the 1980 Carter-Ronald Reagan debate, Jimmy Carter, President Jimmy Carter, said we had to put the inflation into perspective. They were trying to pin him with 12% inflation. Well, he said, no, the first quarter of 1980 was an 18% inflation. Second quarter is 13% inflation, and the third quarter is 7% inflation today. And he said we still got to fight for, you know, fight the 7% inflation, but it's not the 18% inflation. And Jimmy Carter said we got to put the inflation into historical perspective. In 1974, there was an oil shock where OPEC raised prices to an extraordinary degree, and they called that the worst recession since World War II. So there was a 1973 panic, 1973 recession, the worst recession since World War II. That would have been under Ford. This is Nixon and Ford, right? 1974, that's Gerald Ford. <clears throat> so Jimmy Carter said first, you know, he had to combat the recession when he first was elected in 1976 because compared to 1974 and 1979, there was a recession because of an, another oil shock. OPEC is going to double their prices. So it was worse than what they did in 1974, but it was called the most briefest recession since World War II. So it was six months, right? It was only half a year. But a lot of the elements that had been started by Jimmy Carter is going to be, you know, further exacerbated by Ronald Reagan, including the Fed chairman who's going to raise the federal funds rate intentionally as soon as, you know, 1983, as soon as the CPI goes to 4%, you know, they cut federal funds rate at a reasonable rate. So it was intentionally, I don't think anybody argues this. I don't think this is in dispute whatsoever. Nobody argues that Volcker, you know, intentionally, in 1979, the federal funds rate was 11%. It was 11%. In 1976, inflation was 4.8%, which seems, you know, low compared to 18% in the beginning of 1980. But that was double than what was in Ford's administration. So Ford had a recession, but he didn't have all this inflation. Inflation just started growing under Jimmy Carter. And then in late 1980 and early 1981, the Fed, the Federal Reserve, Volcker, Paul Volcker, who was nominated by Jimmy Carter in 1979. So Paul Volcker of the Federal Reserve, the Central Bank of America, tightened the money supply with a federal funds rate of 20%. So in order to combat inflation, you got to contract the money supply somehow. But you're, that's very dangerous. That's what caused the Great Depression and the Panic of 1837. So the federal funds rate is going to be hiked up to 20% in Jimmy Carter's late 1980 to early 19. So in the very end of Jimmy Carter's reign, he's going to raise the federal funds rate up to 20%, and then it's going to be 21.5% by June 1982. So Jimmy Carter, you know, hyped it up 20%, and then uh, you had Ronald Reagan who just kept it, you know, very, very high. Volcker, he was quoted as saying, we have set our course to restrain growth in money and credit, and we mean to stick with it. So he's, you know, Volcker's nominated by Jimmy Carter in 1979, the recession. You had six-month recession that began in 1980. Yeah, you had one year's worth of growth, but can you say, I mean, perhaps Ronald Reagan couldn't pull, you know, the economy up past what Jimmy Carter had, you know, done to it. Or perhaps Ronald Reagan, more likely, Ronald Reagan and Jimmy Carter had very similar policies, like the, you know, high federal funds rate. And so, therefore, the recession had a lot of similarities, similar elements to the damn thing. So, Ronald Reagan, he had the federal funds rate at 21.5%. It's issued by the Fed to combat, right? It's going to stay high 
the entire one year, four months of Ronald Reagan's, you know, part of his recession. So apparently for Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, and Paul Volcker, they were willing to sacrifice a bunch of banks failing, a bunch of businesses failing, a bunch of millions of American workers losing their jobs in order to combat inflation. I don't think you have to, they're not inverses. You can have, you know, full employment and you can have, you know, low inflation. So in 1975, the inflation rate was, you know, 8%. So let's see, 8%, 5%, it keeps, you know, kind of going up and down, but it did get up to 20% in the beginning of 1980. Inflation is going to be 15%, you know, probably average of 1980. So the CPI, right, that's the Consumer Price Index. That's what they use to measure inflation. In June 1981, you're going to have 20% inflation. The CPI is going to be 20%. But 1983, it's going to fall below 4%. So the fight against inflation was successful, but did it make for a good economy? Lots of shit happened under Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan is when you see the rich get way richer and then the wages stagnate. So one of the causes of the Great Depression was ignoring an August and September recession before Black Thursday, the so-called 1929 stock market crash. It was more of a, you know, dip. It didn't crash. It just went down, you know, like 10% or something. So New York Stock Exchange barely dipped a few points. That's the big, great crash of the Great Depression, right? But the that was, you know, one of the calls they ignored that recession. So you got to jump on it whenever you got a too big to fail company that's going down. You also got to jump on a recession. You got to nip at it in the bud. You know, you can't, you can't play with that. You got to antifa that bitch. You got to get on it. You got to jump right on that. So another cause of the Great Depression was the contraction of the money supplied by the Federal Reserve System. So you're playing with fire. You were playing with fire when you raised the federal funds rate like that, too. You're willing to wreck the economy just to make sure that inflation is down. Just, so just like the August and September recession in 1929, in 1981, 1980, the Federal Reserve raised their interest rates, too. So we're contracting the money supply just like what we did for the Great Depression that made it worse, that exacerbated it in 1980 and 1981 so you're playing with fire you're playing with fire when you do it like that can you combat i think it's possible to combat inflation without raising the federal funds rate without raising interest rates that raises everybody else's interest rates the unemployment rate during the 1980 panic the 1980 to 82 recession black folks are going to reach 20 percent peak unemployment and I guess the general economy, 11% in late 1982, December 1982. And this is going to be the very lowest jobless rate post-World War II so far. So America is rightfully freaking out about 11% jobless unemployment rate. 1983, the jobless rate is at 8%, so it's getting better. But it's even, you know, your most conservative economist, they allow for a 5% unemployment rate. 8% is too much. Anything over 5% is too much. I think anything over 0%. If there's one out of 20 people that are looking for work and they can't find work, that's no good. That is unacceptable. So I am totally 100% in favor of full employment. In the beginning of 1983, Ronald Reagan's approval rating is only 35%. So he's a political god, survived the assassination attempt, but within two years, Americans are like, shit, we're sick of this, you know, crappy-ass economy. Ronald Reagan said he, he prayed a lot during this period, not just for America and the American people, but for help and guidance and doing the right thing. And he also admitted that we're really in trouble. Our projections are out the window. We're looking at $200 billion deficits if we can't pull off some miracles. This is Ronald Reagan speaking during, you know, the time of the panic of the early 1980s, unemployment rate didn't drop below 6% until September 1987. 5% is acceptable jobless rate, so we're not even still at an acceptable, you know, unemployment rate. So shit wasn't even better in 1987. So they say, you know, technically speaking, the recession is just 1980 to 1982, but you're also going to have the savings and loan crisis. You're going to have major bank failures. In 1984, they're going to rescue a bank. 
1983 or 82, they let one bank fail. And everything, you know, turned out okay, I think. I think. Because you can actually look at the 1980s and then look over at the overall picture, and it's a shock doctrine. They're using crisis capitalism. The presidency of Ronald Reagan is crisis capitalism. So he had a ton of political capital, and he wasted it. But this is what, you know, Ronald Reagan wants. This was the economy of America that Ronald Reagan wanted. Uh, that he wanted it. So, you know, the goods producers, you had construction, you had manufacturing, you had auto industries. They're all going to get hit the hardest. They're going to lose 90% of their workers. So construction, manufacturing, and auto industries are going to get, you know, just slammed. So the 21.5% federal funds rate, 20% under Jimmy Carter, 21.5% in 1982 under, you know, Paul Volcker and Ronald Reagan, same as, you know, the causes of one of the causes of the 1929 Great Depression, they're using a stop-go policy. So this is Jimmy Carter. He appoints Paul Volcker because Paul Volcker is an anti-inflation hawk. Jimmy Carter's federal credit control program starts March 1980. So October 1982, the inflation is going to go down to 5%. The federal government, the Fed, is reducing the federal funds rate down to 9% because it worked. So 1983, the end of 1982, but that's also the highest unemployment rate. So immediately, as soon as inflation went down, they're like, okay, drop that federal funds rate so we can get, you know, start working on unemployment. During the 1980 debate between Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan, President Jimmy Carter and candidate Ronald Reagan, Jimmy Carter said that nuclear weapons was the number one issue for the 1980 election. Ronald Reagan was huge when it came to military spending. He was going to cut, you know, all the rich people's taxes, and he was going to increase military war spending. How was he going to do that? Reaganomics. He was going to, you know, voodoo economics. President Jimmy Carter criticized Ronald Reagan's economic plan. He pointed to articles that said Ronald Reagan's economics was voodoo economics, and he also pointed out that the article said that Ronald Reagan's economic plan is going to lead to 30% inflation. So Ronald Reagan's plan maybe, you know, could have gone to 30% inflation. It didn't. Jimmy Carter also said that Ronald Reagan's policies would destroy the nation. Jimmy Carter, President Jimmy Carter said that Ronald Reagan's economic plan was ridiculous. He said that Reagan wanted to repeal the minimum wage. It's a heartless approach. And said that Ronald Reagan had leveled the three largest tax hikes in California history, more than double the taxes of California when he was the governor, 122% increase. So candidate Ronald Reagan says, look, the inflation didn't come from nowhere. It came from the government. And, you know, it came, I mean, I don't know where it came from, but Carter did have inflation before, you know, before Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan's going to have it for two years. So Ronald Reagan said that inflation rose under Carter and that Jimmy Carter would stop economic growth, increase unemployment in order to combat inflation. So Jimmy Carter was going to throw, you know, he was basically, Ronald Reagan was going to criticize Jimmy Carter for what he's going to do later on. He says Jimmy Carter is going to stop economic growth, increase unemployment. No, that's what Ronald Reagan did. By increasing the rates, that's less credit, less money, less economic growth. They contracted the money supply. They also contracted the economic growth, and they increased unemployment to combat inflation. But at the time, Ronald Reagan said that Jimmy Carter's plan, you know, is go was going to do that. That's what Jimmy Carter was all about, fighting inflation. Doesn't matter how many people lose their jobs. Doesn't matter how much we slow the economy down. We got to fight inflation. So Ronald Reagan said it wasn't the American people that was living high on the hog. It was the government that was living high on the hog. The government, right? The government itself created inflation. Ronald Reagan said Carter will raise taxes and impoverish the nation. So when asked what cuts he would make to the federal budget, because Ronald Reagan is going to deliver both tax cuts for the wealthy and he's going to increase war spending. How are you going to do that? How are you going to increase War spending and deliver tax cuts. So Ronald Reagan said he's going to cut welfare. He's going to cut welfare. That way he can, you know, deliver the rich people tax cuts and raise war spending. So federal funds rate was, you know, 20%, 19%, 21.5%. It worked. You know, it brought inflation down in, what, two, three short years. And all that was needed was for, you know, a bunch of small businesses and, 
a bunch of bankers and a bunch of millions of American workers to lose their jobs, lose their companies, you know, allow them uh, the opportunity to begin again and to start anew, to begin, you know, completely fresh with a brand new business or a brand new job, to go out and find better work. Really, Ronald Reagan was just offering opportunity. Ronald Reagan and Jimmy Carter just offer an opportunity to the American people by shocking the shit out of the U.S. economy. Oh, you lost your job, America? Well, boo fucking you. You know, you're welcome, actually. That's what Ronald Reagan says. Oh, Ronald, Ronald, Ronald Reagan says, you know, man who played cowboy on TV, you're welcome, America. You lost your job, you're welcome. So we don't have 100% full employment anymore. That's bad for workers' wages and benefits. The higher unemployment you know, uh, 11%. So this, in 1982, the 11% unemployment was worse than the Great Recession. The Great Recession of 2008 did not reach the unemployment level that we saw in 1982. Black folks had 20% unemployment. The general unemployment rate was 11%. People lost their jobs. They lost their houses. They lost their families. And after the Volcker Recession, full 100% employment never came back. Not in the 1990s, not in the early 2000s or the 2010s. So that's what's best for workers' wages and benefits and conditions is full 100% employment. You're looking for work, you should be able to find a job. So the macroeconomics professor at the University of Louisville that taught me said that 5% unemployment is just fine and dandy. We can allow for one out of 20 workers in America who are looking for work. Because that's what defines you to be a member of the labor force. If you're looking for work, but you're not finding any, that's unemployment. Lots of, you know, old people and kids, a lot of people in America don't work at all, so they're not considered part of the labor force. But after the Volcker Recession, inequality is just going to take off big time. Wages are going to stagnate, but the rich are going to get richer and richer and richer. So you have the 1979 Iranian Revolution. They're going to be, there's going to be high oil prices, so that's going to be a contributing factor. You've got Ronald Reagan's tax cuts, Ronald Reagan's deregulation uh, plans. He, had deregula he fired the air traffic controllers. He had two major tax cuts. Uh, in 1981 speech, he proposed a 10% across the board in personal income tax rates for the next three years and accelerated depreciated allowances. Whatever the hell that is, but that's what he was promising. So he got two major tax cuts, Ronald Reagan, got two major bank deregulation bills passed, and he fired the air traffic controllers. So he is shaping the economy exactly, precisely as he wants. You're going to have a whole bunch of poor and working class in 1981, 82. So that's going to be, you know, the poor and working people cannot compete with Wall Street when it comes to investments and this and that. There's a 14% poverty rate in 1981, 15% poverty rate in 1982, so poverty rate's going to go up a point in 1982. 2015, poverty rate is 12%, so apparently we're okay with 14, 15, 12% poverty. We're okay with 1 out of 10, 1 out of 5 of our people being poor. That's, that's fun, you know, all 20%, 1 out of 5, that's fun. 1 out of 10, no problem, no problem at all. So, the, let's see, Ronald Reagan was a tour de force when it comes to the economics of the country, right? You had income inequality, there was still racism, no health care, you know, racism in America, poor education in America, no health care, 1981, no UBI, no ranked choice voting, no real democracy, no social safety net, police brutality, all the same problems that you got today, you still had in 1981 and 82. 1980s actually brought us AIDS, which Ronald Reagan ignored for years. So these, you know, are all contributing factors. In July 1982, Penn Square Bank is going to be fa is going to fail, but it's not going to be saved. It's not going to be resuscitated. No defibrillator paddles. We're not going to electrocute and shock it back into life. We let that zombie Frankenstein die. The, we Lehman brothered the Penn Square Bank. So most banks seem to be saved by the Federal Reserve, but apparently sometimes every once in a while the system allows for one or two sacrificial lands to serve as scapegoats for the bloodthirsty pitchfork carrying public. So Ronald Reagan let Penn Square Bank get fucked July 1982. Penn Square Bank, fuck you. Fuck you, Penn Square Bank. 
So you had high, high oil prices, right? You didn't have to go too much detail on the thing. It's 1979 Iranian Revolution, right? This a lot of similar things. 1973 panic. You also had, you know, OPEC, Iran, oil, Nixon, Ford, Vietnam War too. So all those Middle Eastern oil politics are still around in 1980. Iran is the world's second largest oil producer in the world, and since the revolution. 1979 revolution sparked a second round of oil price increases, doubling oil prices. There was a also, you know, the with the Iranian revolution, a shutdown in Iranian exports, oil exports. So they were hurting themselves too. They weren't just hurting everybody else. But you didn't have the cheap oil, and then also some benefits that came from the. Uh, Middle Eastern oil politics in 1980 was you had more uh, less reliance on Middle Eastern oil, so you had a surge in oil production in other parts of the world, and energy efficiency went up in the world generally. Ronald Reagan ran an 80 billion dollar deficit. He was talking about 800 billion dollar deficits. We might have to do that, you know, 80 billion dollar deficits. So here's Mr. Tax and Spend, spending money all over the place. The mortgage average uh, interest rate for mortgages was 15% in February 1981. Eight million were unemployed. Wages were lower. 6,000 businesses are going to fail in the 1980 to 1982 recession. Double-digit inflation. Government is too big and spending too much, Ronald Reagan said to Congress, and he got a 10-second applause, the legislative branch, in a 1981 speech. Government is too big and spending too much, he said to government, and government cheered. Shock doctrine came along with Reagan. Reagan is big crisis capitalism, shock doctrine. And just like Herbert Hoover in 1929 and Martin Van Buren in 1837, government is the problem. All of these American presidents have been very consistent with the laissez-faire, free market, non-government intervention purist. Some capitalists might be Keynesian in order to just get the, you know, capitalism going. Use socialism to get the engine of capitalism going. But never use socialism to actually help the people. R Ronald Reagan said that, you know, he inherited a, the worst economic mess since the Great Depression. So Ronald Reagan recognizes that 1980... You know, the 82 recession is a big fucking deal. 1984, the Continental Illinois National Bank and Trust Company, the nation's seventh largest bank, had $45 billion in assets. It failed, but it was deemed too big to fail. Therefore, the U.S. government offered it a $4.5 billion rescue package, a bailout, just like they did in 2020, just like they did with TARP in 2008. Only $2.2 trillion with 2020. Only $800, $700 billion in, you know, 2008. And only $4.5 billion for one company, Continental Illinois National Bank and Trust Company, right? The nation's seventh largest bank. We had to save it in 1984. David Stockman is one of Ronald Reagan's advisors. He was tired of arguing in favor of tax cuts. He was actually now asking for tax increases under the 1980. 81, 82 recession. Ronald Reagan fought two thirds of his staff to drop his economic program. And so most of his staff, two thirds of his staff, said, "You got to drop it." He's like, "No." Ronald Reagan said, "Economics." A lot of people that I like says economics. You know, so fuck Ronald Reagan. You say economics, fuck you. I can't even listen to you. Papa Bush is right. Reaganomics is right. Took it down as bullshit. Ronald Reagan blamed the high inflation rates on the government. Oh, it's all about the government, huh? Ronald Reagan, Mr. Southern Country Boy. You ain't no Southern Country Boy. You're out of California, Hollywood, you goddamn actor. Jesus Christ, lying bullshit artist is all he is. A great communicator, my ass. He knew how to, you know, paint his face up, put makeup on his face, and get in front of the camera. That's what, you know, Ronald Reagan was good at. So I think it's important to, you know, bring back the point there's two recessions. But there's going to be similarities, and there's going to be, you know, some continuity. So I think the similarities and differences between the 1980 recession and the 1981 and 1982 recession, the, those are the two different recessions. So I think there's a, there's a continuity. You can, I'm, I'm bunching them together. I'm bunching them together. So uh, this is the panic of 1980, the recession, the 1980 recession. So 2008, it lasted for a year or two. 1929, Great Depression, lasts for 12 years. So you just, you know, Name that first front year. So this is the causes of the 1980 recession. 
So Mr. Anti-Tax and Spin, Ronald Reagan is the one that runs up the debt, runs up the deficit, raises the federal funds.